Hello, I am Davide Fiocco and I will be talking about serving machine learning uh, models with web applications developed using two cool Python libraries, Streamlit and FastAPI. Um, if you want to write me afterwards, this is my Twitter handle. It sounds a bit funny in Spanish, I know. Um, I didn't know back then when I chose it. Anyway, I think it's easy to remember, so maybe that's useful. Um, about me, I started using Python um, now more than 10 years ago. I was using it to analyze data coming from computer simulations or physical systems. Uh, my background is indeed physics. And currently I'm a senior data scientist at Frontiers. Uh, I will spend some time talking about Frontiers. Um, Frontiers is an open access scientific publisher. So we have this, we have this website, www.frontiersin.org, and um, scientists can send their work uh, in the form of scientific articles um, to our website. And afterwards, the articles are reviewed by uh, other experts in the same field. And if they pass the uh, peer review, um, they are eventually published online. Currently, we have um, 92 journals online that are open for submissions and Frontiers has published so far 171,000 um, articles. Uh, I was looking into this yesterday and if you look for Python, uh, well, programming, just to distinguish it from snakes, um, we have indeed scientific articles that are dealing with the usage of Python in, um, in science. So uh, applications um, in biology or libraries um, that are used in a scientific domain. So if you're interested, check it out. Uh, something else about us, uh, we are over 500 employees in different offices in the world. There's one engineering office in Madrid and the company currently processes over um, 60,000 scientific articles per year. This is pretty labor intensive and therefore we have a technology stack that also uses Python. Uh, we use Python um, mainly in our big data pipelines and to power our machine learning components in the platform. So uh, yeah, I will be talking about machine learning and as you know already, it's a very powerful technology. Um, at work, we use natural language processing to, uh, so machine learning to process text data. Um, for instance, to classify scientific articles based on their content. In this slide, you find an example, which is sentiment analysis. Here we want to classify sentences based on their mood. Uh, Granada is really beautiful, um, is a happy sentence, so we'll have an algorithm which is able to uh, recognize this. Actually, if you visit this repository by Hug and Face, um, there's even algorithms that are able to read sentences and uh, assign to them an emoji which is correct to describe their tone. Um, but machine learning is also applied to image and videos. Uh, in those cases, we talk about computer vision. An example of a computer vision application is image segmentation. And that's what we'll, we'll um, play with a bit in the rest of the talk. So in this case, we have an input image and we want to assign to different regions uh, of it different classes depending on the content. So here we have all this area, which is the background. So we assign it the color black. Here we have the vehicle. So we color the motorcycle in a different way and we color the motorcyclist um, in a different way still. Um, what's nice nowadays is that uh, it has become easier to at least apply machine learning models um, if, yeah, if we program Python. Uh, because there are frameworks like PyTorch or TensorFlow or Scikit-Learn that um, allow to run machine learning models easily. So for instance, if we wanted to solve the uh, image segmentation task that we just have seen using PyTorch, we could do the following. We could load a pre-trained model. Here we trust um, the model provider to have trained correctly the model so it's both fair and accurate. 
Uh, and then we can essentially um, use this model a bit like a Python function on some input image and get in output some model prediction, which is essentially this uh, colored uh, mask here. Um, this is very nice. However, if we want to make the models useful uh, for other users or make the models um, usable for other computer application, we need some other elements that are not provided by, for instance, PyTorch or TensorFlow. Um, we need often to construct a front end, so some kind of interface um, so that people can, for instance, upload an image and then uh, invoke um, the um, model by pressing a button and getting results, like in this example here. Uh, or, well, not only front end, we also need a back end so that another um, application can um, call uh, the backend and by sending an image and then getting a result. Uh, this typically would be done, for instance, with a C or URL call um, like this that references the um, backend endpoint. So, uh, having a front end and a backend is really useful to uh, make machine learning um, working in a way for users and applications. The problem is that you may need to master several technologies in order to build both. And so wouldn't it be nice to build um, both the front end and the back end using pure Python and hopefully without uh, writing a lot of code. So uh, this can be done. Um, so I will propose a simple solution. I will show it here that uses Python and Docker. So Python is, uses, is used here uh, to build the front end by uh, employing the Streamlit library. And instead the back end um, can be built using the fast API library. Docker, uh, and in particular Docker Compose, is used to um, make the front end and back end work together and also can facilitate the deployment. Let's talk a bit about the uh, libraries that constitute the building blocks for the solution. So one, as I said, is Streamlit, and this is their website. Mm, as they say here, they want to make it easy to build beautiful web applications used in machine learning and data science. And I agree that this library can be very helpful to build simple UIs without writing um, a lot of code. You don't need to be an expert of JavaScript. You don't need to know uh, HTML. Uh, to, to build these user interfaces. Uh, the libraries, the, the Streamlit is pretty intuitive to use. Um, you essentially just write one, one line of code and this can translate into, um, this is translated by the library into a widget in your, in your user interface. The project has become um, pretty popular. It has 10,000 stars on GitHub. And uh, if you want to compare it with other frameworks like Dash or, or Shiny, uh, which is popular among our users, uh, you can check this web page um, on plotly.com. Also, let's talk about FastAPI. Um, they want to be high performance, easy to learn, fast to code and ready for production. And indeed, I found FastAPI to be um, capable of building APIs with documentation without writing a lot of code. Uh, FastAPI is especially easy to use um, if you know already Flask. So anyway, I would agree that it's quite easy to, to learn. Um, also because it has an extensive documentation and the lead developer, Sebastian Ramirez, has um, recorded a lot of videos um, about how to use the library. The project has become pretty popular. It has 20,000 stars on GitHub and you can compare it with other popular frameworks like Flask or uh, Django um, by visiting this, this web page. Okay, so let's look more in detail uh, inside our, our solution. Um, this is on, on GitHub. Um, very happy to, um, to respond to issues if there are any. And yeah, the code may have bugs. So uh, this is also open for pull requests. The project is described on this, um, in this blog post. Um, the architecture of the project um, is um, 
represented here. We have two containers. One takes responsibility for running the front end, uh, and that's powered by the Streamlit library. Uh, this serves a user interface to users with um, descriptions and buttons uh, and so on. The front end also is capable of uh, firing a request uh, to the back end using the request uh, library. And the back end runs using FastAPI and the core machine learning task, as we just said, is um, done by PyTorch code. So, uh, okay, let's have a little walkthrough uh, really quickly of the, of the, of the code. Uh, okay, so the code as it is on GitHub is, is here. So you have um, a readme file that, um, yeah, say, explains a bit how to run the uh, web application and also how to deploy uh, on Heroku and how to debug it. Um, the architecture is formalized in code in this docker compose uh, .yaml file. As I said, we have two services, um, one um, for the backend, uh, which is in the same docker network as the frontend, um, the, the streamlit container. Um, we also expose ports so that both the, uh, front, the backend and the frontend are reachable uh, from the outside. So we can peek into the Python code of the backend. So as we said, there is PyTorch code to, um, well, run the machine learning model on a given image and uh, give an output the uh, uh, result, the colored map. Uh, so I won't go too much into detail because this is really taken from the PyTorch hub guide. We essentially, uh, take uh, the pre-trained model uh, from the PyTorch hub, and then we uh, have a function which takes um, this model and runs it over um, a binary image. There's also some pre-processing involved. Uh, this is where we invoke the, the model. We call the model to, to get the output predictions that are also uh, given in output uh, in the end by, by the function. So this PyTorch code is used inside the um, backend, as we said. So here we have FastAPI. Um, we indeed create a FastAPI object with uh, a title um, for, this is used in the app documentation. And also the same is, the same is true for the description. And then the main part is this, where we declare an endpoint that the front end or another application can call by passing um, an input an image. Um, this this uh, piece of code runs the model here, and then returns to the um, to the client um, the uh, machine learning model result. Let's have a look at the uh, front end. So the, the front end code is here and it uh, uses Streamlit and the request library. Requests are used to um, send uh, the input given by the user to the fast API backend in this uh, processing function here. And instead the construction of the UI layout is very simply done by Streamlit here. So we, with this instruction, we create a title for our web application. We will see this in a second. Uh, we write to the web page some description, and also we create widgets so that users can upload an image, which will be stored in this variable. This um, input image will be then kind of passed to um, the uh, backend by invoking the, um, the process function that we have seen above here. Uh, and yeah, the call to the backend is triggered by the pressing of this button here. Finally, the output result is shown to the user uh, with this final um, streamlit call. So that's pretty much it. Uh, if we want to run the application, we would just need to uh, use Docker Compose. So let's do a Docker Compose up. This. Um, activates fast the fast API backend and the streamlit um, front-end containers. And uh, yeah, so let's have a look. We can visit the front-end 
uh, at this address here and we can uh, check that everything works. Indeed, you can see the title here, the description of the application are different widgets that we have created using Streamlit. Uh, okay, yeah, this is made with Streamlit indeed. We have to wait a bit for the backend to process the image, but in the end we get the result. Um, the backend documentation is now visible at this address. So yeah, everything seems to be working. In case we want to deploy the application on the web, we can use a tool like Heroku. Uh, as far as I know, we need an add-on, uh, Doc Hero, to, to run the application. It takes about 10 minutes to deploy using the instruction that you find on the, uh, on the GitHub repository. And at the end of the process, you have a web application which is public on the web and uh, is accessible at this address for the uh, front end. And here we can visit the, the back end. So uh, that's pretty much it for the code walkthrough. I hope that was enjoyable. Uh, thanks very much for attending the talk and I'm happy to take questions.